to be close to the heart of every member of the Father's house. That on this month, January the 25th at 6 p.m., our very own Reverend Ricardo will flip it. He's going to receive an honorary doctorate here from the um, St. Thomas Christian University of uh, Florida, Jacksonville, Florida. The president of the school is going to fly for himself to confirm this upon uh, Dr. Flippin. Somebody should say amen. Amen. our way of saying thank you, or this is our opportunity to say thank you uh, to Pastor Flippin for all that he means to us here at the Father's House. Amen? Amen. 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 Having said that this morning, I want to uh, introduce and present to some and others, none other than um, he who has been a friend to us here at the Father's House. Amen. He whose life whom uh, I've watched change through the life of my ministry. Amen. Since I came back to Charleston in 1988, um, somehow, some way, our lives have been intertwined and, and interacted, and I've watched uh, the change of Pastor Flippin. Amen. Uh, Pastor Flippin used to be like my wife called me one day when she was mad at me. Amen. She was mad, and I guess I was just being overburned or something. I don't know what I was doing, but she just let me have it one day. She said, you little Napoleon woman. <laughs> And it, 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 it was, I mean, it just went through me, but I just had to laugh. And you know what? It must have affected me because I never forgot about it. Amen? <laughs> and I said that because when I, read, when I met Reverend Flippin, that, that's kind of like Reverend Flippin. Reverend Flippin was getting on us. <laughs> you walk in shallow, Reverend Flippin barking at everybody. Amen? You go in the office and, and, and Reverend Flippin just, just being Reverend Flippin. Amen? Amen. And, and whenever you see Reverend Flippin's presence, you, you, you knew he was in Reverend Flippin's presence. Because that's just who he was. Amen? He, he was like, he never left the military. Amen? And that was it. I remember whenever the Alliance had something to do, uh, they're like, we had something that's called the Marshal, the Sergeant of Arms. He was responsible for getting everybody else in order and getting them lined up and getting them down the road. And, and, and you knew when Reverend Flippin was in charge of it was going to happen. Just like it was. If you wasn't ready, that's okay. You're going to be left. Amen? But I watched and I saw how over the last years that the Holy Ghost has just commanded his life in a way to where I saw uh, just a softness and a tenderness and a humbleness uh, that God has just developed inside of Pastor Flipper. And something that has drawn our relationship much closer than, than it's ever been. And, and I thank God. I tell anybody I look up to him, amen, as a father figure in the ministry. Somebody that I can learn from, somebody that has a wealth of knowledge. And I just thank God for allowing him to come here and be with us. And so it is a great privilege that I present and introduce him this morning to come and to give us this Christmas Sunday morning message uh, for God to just speak to our hearts and to bless us. Amen. St. Luke chapter 2, 11 through 15. I recognize that now from home. What is chapter? Chapter 2. Verses 11 through 15. Luke chapter 2, verses 11 through 15. And it says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. 
Now, let's go to James. James, chapter 1. James, chapter 1, verse 17. James, chapter 1, verses 17. It says this, every good gift and every perfect gift yes. is from above and cometh down from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Last one, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 15 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 15 Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. His unspeakable gift. Unspeakable. Yes, sir. Well, it's still time. There's still time. And what I want to speak with you about for a little while today. So you'll have time to do it. I want to talk a little bit about let's go Christmas shopping. Let's go Christmas shopping. You know, the pastor was talking to me about, well, last Saturday, not yesterday, last Saturday, he was talking and he was telling us about uh, him mentoring some young people. And when he asked them if they know anything about salvation or anything about Jesus or the Christmas story, he was astonished that they did not. They literally had no idea of the Christmas story. And I thought about that uh, because there are so many people who don't know the Christmas story. All right. We read of these surveys and these uh, 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 exposés about so many folk who don't go to church uh -huh. today. Mm -hmm. So many people who don't even believe in having religion. They have a new religion and it's called humanism. Mm -hmm. And also, I don't want you to get confused because I, I, I need you to also know that yoga, I'm wrestling now, yes, sir. yoga is part of a religion. Okay. It is a tenet, it is a principle, it is a teaching of a religion. So when you go jumping into yoga, I just thought I'd let you know you better watch what you do. Yes, and so, knowing how people don't seem to understand or know the Christmas story. The Christmas story is in danger of becoming just an old wives' Come on, tale. Man. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Something that at least we do at least once a year at this time mm -hmm. of the year. It's almost like I'll tell you how much in danger the gospel story of Jesus is. Mary had a little lamb. His feast was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. I bet you a lot of y'all didn't know that. I bet a lot of you have forgotten part of it. There were three little pigs and who was the enemy of the three little pigs? Oh, yeah. 
the big All right. But well, we want the Christmas story to be the same way. We want people, when we say, do you know the Christmas story? Oh, yeah. We want them to say, yeah, it's about a man called Jesus. Yes, sir. It was about a, a, a baby born yeah. in a manger. Yeah. That his mother was a virgin. And, the gave, and Gabriel, the angel, came unto her and told her that she was blessed in sight of God. And she would have a child. And when you go on and tell the Christmas story. But I want you to realize that there are those who don't know Amen. the Christmas story. Amen. And when people don't know the Christmas story, guess what? They don't know Jesus. And the Christmas story is the story of God's gift of hope and love yes, to humankind. Amen. The Christmas story, I want you to remember that, is a story of hope and love given to you and me. Mm -hmm. Jesus loves all kinds of people. <coughs> Jesus loves the sinner. Jesus loves women and children. And Jesus loved, I like this word here, and, and I'm going to say it, and I'm going to find out how many of you actually know what I mean. Uh, it, it says that Jesus loves marginalized folks. Uh -oh. Who are marginalized folks? Marginalized folk are folk with no influence, little influence, no political thought, no political power, no money, no stature. Yes, sir. In other words, marginalized folk are us sometimes. Marginalized folk are the kicked out. Marginalized folk are the shut out. Marginalized folk are the picked out. Jesus loves all. Kind of people. Yes, yes. Jesus doesn't care if you're short. Jesus doesn't care if you're tall. Mm -hmm. Jesus doesn't care if you're rich. Yes, sir. He really doesn't care if you're black or white. All right now. Neither slave nor free. Mm -hmm. Jesus loves all the people. Yes. Jesus even loves tax collectors. Mm -hmm. Jesus loves the sick. In fact, Jesus loves whoever so will. <coughs> Jesus is God's gift. For our every need. Jesus says, You ask in my name, and you shall receive. John 16 and 24. He says, You have not because you ask not. He says, If you seek, you will find. If you ask, it shall be given. And if you not, it shall be opened up to you. What am I talking If you seek peace, seek me. If you need something, ask me. If you need a door open, ask me, and I'll knock on it. You need to knock on it. We must never forget that the Christmas story is holy history. Mm -hmm. It's like saying America, the history of America. <coughs> the history of America can be many things. In San Antonio, Texas, there's a history, mm -hmm. and it's called Remember the Alamo. It's the history of San Antonio and the founding of San Antonio and also the liberation, the stealing of the stealing of the state of Texas from Mexico. That's a history. Well, a holy history is the story of a virgin being blessed with a child. And that child grows up. You heard, well, yeah. Did a beautiful job. Mary, did you know? That's a holy story. You told the holy story. How he gave sight to the blind, healed sick folks, put running in bad legs. That's a holy history. It's a history of God's relationship with you and me. Y'all help me somebody. We must never forget that the Christmas story is a holy history. It is God's eternal gift and plan of salvation. That's why I come to preach salvation. Because that's what the gift is on this day. It God sent the good and perfect gift. As we're told in James 1, 17. One thing, and here we go. 
One thing that cannot be avoided during the Christmas season is shopping. So this morning I want to help you with your Christmas shopping. And talk about God's greatest gift to us. Paul says, thanks be unto God sir, for, the, for his unspeakable gift. Let's go gift shopping. It's gift giving time. First of all, I, I tell my son, Pastor, yes, sir. and you know this. I call my son and says, yes, Pastor. You know, remember a couple of months ago, I mentioned to you that I was studying how to do a three-point sermon. Because <laughs> you know, I don't do three-point sermons. And so I said, guess what? I'm going to try to do a three-point sermon tomorrow. So I need you to pray for him. Come on, Dad. And so, like I said, everything is evolving. Everything is... All, right, all these years, I've never, ever preached a three-point sermon. All right. Because that's not been my style. It may not be my style today. But we're going to look at three points when we look at this gift and as we go shopping. The first thing about going shopping is the gift must be a personal gift. All right. We have to remember the gift is not for me. The gift is not for you. It is for someone else. All right. The second thing is the gift must be practical. The gift must be needed and have a practical use. For the receiver, think of a fruitcake. <laughs> How many fruitcakes are re-gifted? See, that's the point. See, the gift must be practical. Now, for my mother-in-law, she's gone home. She loves fruitcakes. So for Nana, a fruitcake was a practical gift. But guess what? For me, that's not a practical gift. That's not a personal gift. So the gift must be practical, and it also must be a permanent gift. The gift we give should be something that is permanent and has lasting value or pleasure. In the midst of all the shopping and gift giving, we may lose sight of the real gift of Christmas. And here's the message. God is the gift giver. God gave a good and perfect gift 2014 years ago. It's a gift of universal love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What a perfect gift. Why the gift to you and me? Gifts are given for the purpose of strengthening relationships or mending a broken one. Why do you give a gift? We give gifts because we want to seal a relationship. We want to let somebody know, I care enough for you to give you this. I give you this gift on your birthday to show you I appreciate you and the value of your birthday. Yeah. I give you this gift on your anniversary to acknowledge and recognize the value of your anniversary. I give you this gift because I messed up, honey, and so I'm going to give you something to try to make up yes, sir. for what I've done. Yeah. Well, see, God gave a gift to mankind because our relationship needed strengthening and mending. Our relationship had been destroyed and damaged by something called sin. And God gives a good and perfect gift 2014 Years ago, God is the source of 
the good and yeah, yeah, perfect yeah, yeah. gift. The word gift denotes the act of God giving. Yeah. It denotes the act of the gift of Jesus Christ. And uh, and the emphasis and God gives a good and perfect gift. There's an emphasis on the giver. God is the giver yes, of the gift. Amen. Oh, I want to let you know that the gift of God is always a good gift. God always gives on the basis of his good character. He does not give on the basis of our character. He does not stop giving to us when we fail him. I stop by to tell you, we can never earn or deserve favor from God. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Thanks to the gift itself. Jesus is the unspeakable gift of God to mankind. That man cannot conceive of such a love. Unspeakable refers to Jesus as being inexpressible, indescribable, and incomprehensible. Well, I said, I talked to you about some points a little bit earlier. Well, God's gift is a personal gift. Yes, sir. Remember I told you the gift is for someone else. But God's gift is a personal gift. It's a gift to you and it's a gift to me. For God has told us that for all has sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm not proud to tell you, he died for you yeah. and he died for me. Yes, Luke 2 11 makes the gift of Jesus personal. For it says, For unto you and unto me. Yeah. There's a born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Oh, how personal can that gift of life be? That was given for me. I've heard people say that if you or I were the only person left alive on the earth, that God would still have sent His Son Jesus yes, unto me. So we see that God's gift is personal. God's gift is also practical and perfect. See, God is the Creator, and God He is perfect. And we want to let you know that because God is the Creator. And God is perfect. That God took on Himself yes, and became a man and became flesh yeah. and dwelt among us. Yes, so the flesh, being of God, is a flesh that is perfect. In Him there is no fault. In Him there is no fault. God's gift is practical and perfect. And I want you to know and God has manifested Himself in the flesh and taken away our sins. And in Him there is no sin. Oh, God's gift is not only practical and perfect, but God's gift is permanent. It says, who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall the tribulation separate me from the love of God? Can distress that separate me from the love of God? Persecution or famine or nakedness cannot separate me from the love of God. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things past can separate me from the gift of God. Nor things yet to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Represent Christ Jesus, our Lord. God's gift is permanent. For John 10, 28 says that the gift of God is eternal life. is permanent. 
Jesus said, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. I stop by to tell you that Jesus Christ is a one-stop shop.
from God, the good and perfect gift that contains the Holy Spirit. We wouldn't live the way that we did. We wouldn't talk the way that we talk. We show love a lot more than we love. We show we'll be more giving than we are. For we love to receive what we find in all the gift to God. Oh, unwrap the gift of eternal life and receive the Holy Ghost. Because when you receive the Holy Ghost, you'll have life more abundantly. You'll enjoy who you are. You'll find satisfaction no matter what situation you find yourself in. Are y'all in the morning? Y'all want to hear about commercialism. Y'all want to hear about Angel Santa Claus. Y'all want to hear about how Christmas ain't like it used to be. No, it's tough. But you got to receive the gift of God. Yes. And the gift of God is the Holy Spirit. Yes. Because when you truly receive the gift, the good and perfect gift, and unwrap that gift, then you can enjoy the gift. As long as it's wrapped, you don't know if it's practical, you don't know if it's permanent, and you don't know if it's perfect. I'm going to close by telling you a story that I tell every year I have an opportunity to preach around here. I have a dear friend who used to live here. He doesn't live here any longer. He was a pastor. And he pastored a church that was very good to him. He had numerous gifts at Christmas. Kind of got up in boxes. And I go to his house maybe a week or so after New Year's and there'd be one or two gifts still on his couch. And his gifts would be still wrapped. And I said, God, what are you going to unwrap those gifts? He says, I'll get to them. And I should think, how impersonal. How arrogant. If someone cares enough for you, yes. they would give you a gift. Yes. And you would be arrogant enough to just take it mm. and throw it on a couch. My God. And I come to find out, because I had to ask him about it after we got close enough. Why do you do that, Doc? You know what Doc said? If it ain't money, I don't necessarily want it. Now there's a commercial message. If you want to hear something about Christmas, some of you, if it ain't money, or if it's not something especially material, post $200 tennis shoes. Amen. 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 And then I got to close. Then I got to close with this. About the gift being practical, personal, and permanent. Somebody got little children, little children. So we'll make it up six, seven. You're going to buy them a lot of stuff. And what you're going to find out in two days <laughs> is that what you bought wasn't practical, it wasn't personal. And it wasn't personal because they done took it and just threw it away. Not even play with it. Like they say, Sister Carol, they play with the box more than what was in the box. So I just want to close by saying, I thank you for this opportunity and for your listening. But again, unwrap Jesus and find the Holy Spirit. Well, May God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.